Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from controlpaint.com. And today I'm gonna to do a bit of a painting demo using custom brushes in order to create this still life. But as a quick reminder, if you look below the post, you'll find links for free brushes and worksheets, as well as in-depth premium series available in the Control Paint store. Now, normally I like to stay away from time-lapse footage because I feel like it's a bit dishonest. So know that this footage is sped up about four or five times, so I don't paint this quickly, not even close. But I wanted to be able to give you the painting from start to finish in order to show the entire workflow of using these custom brushes. So this first half of the painting is what I call the layered phase. And all of the painting I'm doing is direct painting. I'm not using any glaze layers, it's all normal opaque layers. But I do have one layer on top, which is my line work. So I don't have to worry about messing up the lines as I paint underneath them. And this is a great way to block in a painting because I can get the structure down without accidentally covering up that line work that I drew. It's also a really nice way of working in order to get a gestural loose quality. Because you notice I'm making big action-packed strokes. And that's no accident. Because the lines are on a separate layer, I can work confidently like this knowing I can always erase away and refine that layer. They're temp layers, after all. And actually, this pink glaze that I'm adding right now is the only time that I glaze in the entire painting. So everything else you see is done on normal layers. And I have my flow turned down a bit, so I'm not laying down too much pigment at one time. But it's very basic, direct painting. Now at this point, I've essentially got my entire painting blocked in. So I'm gonna flatten all these temporary layers down, including the line work that was on top, and enter the flat phase. So from this point forward, I know the big picture is correct. I've got the proportions right, mainly the colors are all in the right place, and all I need to do is refine. So now I don't really need to keep those lines separate anymore because it's all pretty well established. So from here on out, I'll keep making those temp layers. Add a new layer, paint a little extra, erase part away. But all the while, really, I'm just refining. I could stop this painting at any time and call it done. Now, clearly, this is a sketch. It's not a beautifully refined painting. But this phase can go on for as long as you want. The longer that I stay in this refining phase, the more finished the image will look when it's done. And I really like this phase of the painting because it's low stress. I've already established everything, so this is just the polish. It's hard to mess up. Now here's I paint the specularity on the orange. You see I'm trying out a couple different textures. Well, having a texture library that you can modify your current brush with is really handy. And this is another subject that I talk about in custom brush design which you can find in the store. So the brush itself is pretty basic, but the naturalistic character is coming from that texture that's applied over top. And I really like working in this way because it's sort of the best of both worlds. I like using the basic three brushes, and I've said this before in a bunch of videos, hard round, soft round, and hard flat. They work really well. They give a nice, easy rendering. But then when you add in a little bit of extra texture, it gives you that nice gestural loose quality as well. And it really is amazing how much you can change the characteristic of these basic three brushes with just some different textures. The next step here is gonna be working on this shiny chrome cap. It looks sort of weird, but it's actually a cap from a big thermos I've got. It's great for keeping coffee in but it's got a really smooth surface with smooth gradations between the light and dark. It's got a bit of banding because it's a machined chrome metal. And so to create this look, I'm actually working with a really soft airbrush with only a little bit of texture on it. And I'm going way outside the lines, focusing mainly on those transitions. But here I can go in and sharpen up the edge when I'm done with the interior shape. So I get a nice clean looking metal because it's got that sharp edge. So sometimes it's great to go outside the lines at first, be really soft and sloppy, and then later come back and clean up your silhouette. Same goes for this top here. 
I didn't even paint in the top until I was done with the rest. And that just makes it a little easier to control because things like ellipses can be a challenge to keep tight. And this vertical specularity is a great opportunity for a naturalistic brush. As you can see, just a few strokes gave a nice character to that hot spot in the specularity. It's amazing how much of material information we get from the way that hot spot looks. If you spend a little extra textural time on that little bright highlight, you will tell worlds of information about the rest of the material. And this is another thing that custom brushes are great at. Even if you're using more basic brushes for the rest of your rendering, put in a little special texture in that highlight and you'll sell it. So at this point, I'm ready to call this thing pretty much done. I could noodle around in details forever, but really this is about as much detail as I wanted to throw in for our demo today. So hopefully these three videos have convinced you that custom brushes are something you ought to be using, and really, probably something you should be making yourself. So remember, tomorrow, custom brush design goes on sale, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching, guys.